Welcome back once again. And as we earlier said in our interview, the Prime Minister Mustafa Mitbudi held two meetings this week to prepare for an economic, uh, huge economic conference at the end of this month upon the directives of President Abdel Fattah Sisi. As uh, uh, the President, the Head of State said that there is a pressing or a dire need uh, for an economic conference in which economic experts and leaders of the world and entrepreneurs and investors could be able to collaborate and uh, meet to exchange views and to shed more light on this topic we're uh, joined uh, by our dear guest uh, uh, as excellency ambassador gamal bayoumi former assistant uh, foreign minister uh, good morning uh, ambassador bayoumi good morning good morning how are you doing sir uh, first of all, let's talk about uh, the preparations for the economic conference upon the directives of the head of state. Uh, what type of a conference uh, and how is it going to be different from other very successful conferences that were held earlier? Very important. It is uh, one more addition to what we are doing the efforts in order to make a common understanding from all the parties, it is for the Egyptians, yes. Australians, investors, traders, to understand what we are going to do. Of course, we have a perfect economic plan. It's well defined. You can find it on the page of the ministry plan. Uh, but, but conferences like that, it's direct communication between the authorities, prime minister is there, and those who are dealing with our economic growth. And here we are talking about Egypt and trying to market about Egypt and uh, draw the attention of uh, possible uh, investors, whether they are Egyptians, Arabs, or uh, foreign. And we, we, we market for Egypt by telling the following, that Egypt, in our opinion, of course, it's not only the 100 million inhabitants living in uh, 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 of the earth of Egypt, but it is almost 2,000 million inhabitants. Why? Because we uh, uh, included agreement with our Arab brothers in, uh, to establish a pan Arab free trade area. We have the same now with Africa with 1,200 inhabitants. If you export to any part in the Arab world or Africa, you are exempted uh, uh, from any custom duties or any trade barriers. And the most important also, our main trade partner, which is the uh, European Union, where we have an association agreement which is covering our economic and political and security and uh, cultural relation with Europe with another 500 million inhabitants in, in the richest uh, market in the whole world. So this is the future of the Egyptian trade. And this, of course, can bring investors from Japan, from China, and we tell them if you produce your commodities in your country, then export it to Europe. You will pay uh, custom duties and other charges. If you produce it the same, commodity in Egypt, you are exempted from any customers. And we are saving also for the new areas where we are trying to establish new areas of uh, business and industry in Sinai, on, uh, on uh, Red Sea, back on the western part of Egypt, also in the Alamein. So Egypt is really engaged in a, a sort of uh, uh, conferences like that. That's mm -hmm. the way we are more into our uh, Egypt. And uh, I hope that this will, of course, create more trade, will create much more of investment for this country. Right. The Prime Minister is expected to meet with uh, some important industrialists uh, and also entrepreneurs and investors and uh, economic experts. Um, uh, what is the expected uh, pressing uh, topics uh, to be tackled uh, on the table of negotiations for that uh, conference? This is one uh, good matter about the conferences. Because in, in, in the daily life, I go... I knock the door of uh, the authority of investment, trying to know what to do in order to establish a, a project. 
here I am with the highest executive authority, top authority in Egypt, which is the prime minister. And of course, many ministers will be there. Mm. And we, we can talk directly to them. And they can answer us. They can solve problems uh, at the spot. And uh, what we are saying that we need more investment in new areas, such as Sinai or Red Sea or west of Egypt, and in new industries. We, we do not produce all we need uh, nowadays. And uh, for example, now we are uh, concentrating on the transport and car industry, telecommunications and uh, uh, information technology. All these new areas can uh, bring uh, new sources of, of investment. Also, we are talking to our uh, young generation that we are not only behind the normal industries. No, we need the, the one-man project. We need the, the tiny and small industries and projects, and we shall support it by all means. So this will encourage our young generation in order to work by themselves, not waiting to be employed anywhere, but they can uh, create and start their own projects. Uh, Your Excellency, now most of the uh, plans, uh, mo most of the uh, economic programs, uh, political programs, social programs are very much related to the uh, goals, the sustainable development goals. On top of them is the climate change and uh, the environment. So um, do you think that among the targets or among the topics to be discussed is a, um, um, laws to be ratified or to be uh, issued or um, updated to be able to uh, reflect green or affect the green economy uh, in the region uh, that come in accordance with the uh, new uh, and modern economic rules? Yes, uh, as a matter of fact, Egypt now is very active con the concern with the environment. We shall host the COP27 in coming uh, November. So it is expected for, from Egypt to do uh, efforts in two directions. First is to make our uh, actual industry and the present industry more friendly to the environment. Same time, we have to put and draw the lines uh, of new laws and uh, regulations concerning new industry to make it green industries. And uh, as you will know, we are talking now about uh, cars which we are working with mm -hmm. electricity or with uh, solar energy and so on. So, of course, we are covering this challenge also with uh, all these uh, efforts. And I am sure that Egypt is giving very good impression in this, uh, in this domain. Right. Do you think that this conference is going to be a good opportunity and a chance uh, for expertise to exchange views and ex exchange experiences from different countries and also to be able to uh, collaborate uh, and filter uh, their uh, experiences to bring to the world uh, a better economy and better economic reform programs? Yes, of course. And this is a very good uh, question. And I want to our audience to realize that whenever we have a conference. Of course, we have the main meetings, a general meeting several times, and then parallel meetings to smaller groups uh, according to their interest. But according to this, when one participant see who are participating, he would ask for a tete-a-tete -tete meeting also. And uh, according to my experience, Sometimes we, we, we invite for tens of thousands of meetings alongside with the main uh, meeting and the, the plenary. The plenaries are something like 10, 20 meetings. But then we have the parallel meetings, hundreds, and we have uh, those petited meetings, uh, more, more than uh, thousands of, of meetings in order to talk in details, then you are here doing real business between investors and investors, between uh, those who are exhibit and those who are coming to knock the door in order to uh, make investment in our country.
Mm. So also, uh, as we all know that uh, uh, the political events and political crisis worldwide are also affecting the course uh, of uh, economic process worldwide and affecting crisis. Um, and the Russian-Ukrainian war is one of those on top of those also that have changed the map of economy. Uh, worldwide and have affected crisis in almost every country worldwide. So uh, is this conference going also to discuss uh, political situations and its effect over uh, the economic process and ways to be able to uh, stand up to those uh, effects of uh, the economic uh, the yeah. political yeah. crisis? This is, this is very important point also because you cannot make a meeting without seeing where are you living. And the whole world, mm. without any exception, are, are worried about two challenges. First, the corona epidemic. Of course. As a disease and as the uh, economic impact. Uh, yes. Which the health crisis in general. Which affected badly the tourist uh, uh, industry. Many uh, airway companies closed down. Yesterday, they said that the German government is supporting mm -hmm. its airway. Uh, company with 8 billion uh, euros. This is a huge uh, support. And another challenge, which is the war in Ukraine. And it affects us in two, in two sides. First, the lack of energy for uh, Europe, because Russia closed its pipes of gas. The second is the, the, the food uh, problem. And in Egypt, we were worried about this. But the good news here is that Egypt has a good experience because we started our economic reform much earlier than the two problems here. We started our economic reform in November 2016. So when we have those two challenges, we were already standing on strong feet. And uh, uh, relatively, the Egyptian uh, it, it, uh, develop, development is much more better than any country in the world. And uh, the AMF, which is the Arab Money a couple of days ago expected that Egypt will grow by 6% annually, while the growth in America and uh, Europe and China will be minus. So Egypt is among very few countries which is still growing positively, but we want to double this because we have many challenges uh, us, uh, uh, calling for us to face. Uh, the, the, the birth rate is high already. Uh, also, we want the new generation to find their own jobs uh, much easier. So, uh, as you rightly said, such a challenge and problem should be discussed in a conference like that. Even the regional problems also should be discussed. What is happening in Syria or in Libya, what's happening in Yemen, Mm. So what the division in Sudan, because all these, of course, by a way or another, they affect the environment in our area about investment and trade. Speaking about uh, seeking ways, best ways for uh, up upgrading our investment opportunities, also uh, oh. the, con the whole continent of Africa is one uh, hidden treasure especially in uh, uh, African countries, where you could find good opportunities uh, for the Egyptian market and other markets also. But there is probably in some African countries, there is lack of governance and management to be able to make the best use of these uh, treasures and opportunities. So do you think this is going to be uh, on the um, panel of discussions? Of course, this is a very important panel. And I remember several times I asked my guests from uh, many European countries, what are things which attract you? What are things which are a sort of challenge against mm. your attitude to invest? They are complaining about things among them mm. at the beginning, the bureaucracy. In Africa and the developing countries, the, the most important enemy against any investment is the bureaucracy. Mm. It is very complicated and you spend days and days in order to stop uh, your project. Second, the, the banking system, we do not have in Africa what we call first class 
a bank to, to issue a letter of credit. N number three, the transport in Africa is not uh, up to the international level and our airway traffic uh, does not cover all the, the capitals. Mm. We need more airway traffic, we need road traffic, we need our right. port to be millionaire. These are the challenges of an investor in our country. Right. And That's... of course, one more thing, mm. that the, the uh, mass media has a role to play and take in Egypt, which is really attracting uh, much more investment than any right. uh, developing country around us. Still, our mass media is not aware of the importance of giving a good impression mm. about investing in Egypt, and they are even attacking investors. And some of them are, uh, are calling to, to make the investment only by Egyptians. They, they are not happy with foreigners to invest in Egypt. Mm. So these all challenges must be tackled, and I think we are up to it. Right. On that note, uh, Your Excellency Ambassador Kamel Bayoumi, former Assistant Foreign Minister, would like to thank you, sir, very much for talking to us on the breakfast show for this morning. And we're going to go to a short break and we'll come to continue the breakfast show, so stay with us.